Welcome to this series on organic chemistry. Um, this topic is going to be an extension of what we learned from standard level chemistry. We begin by a look at a reaction called nucleophilic substitution. And we saw this earlier in standard level chemistry. It involves a halogenoalkane. So we'll say we've got chlorine here attached to our ethane molecule. So I'll put its formula down here, CH3, CH2, Cl. And what we react it with is something called a nucleophile. A nucleophile is a substance that's positive liking. Things that would be positive liking would possess negative charges or have electrons available to bond with the positive charge. So molecules such as hydroxide, water, ammonia, a cyanide ion, all possess this property, either having a negative charge themselves or readily available electrons that can seek the positive charge. Now where the positive charge resides occurs from this discrepancy between electronegativities of this carbon and this chlorine. Chlorine wins the tug of war for electrons, making the chlorine negative and the slight carbon slightly positive. This is the site that our nucleophiles are attracted to. When they bond to this site, they often release the, hal the halogen. So here I'm going to use this for my symbol for my nucleophile reacting with my halogenoalkane, and I would then end up with, say, something like this, CH3, CH2, with my nucleophile now attached, and the chlorine has now been released. So this is a general or an overall pattern to the reaction. What I want to take a look at now is the mechanism or the steps by which this reaction occurs. The steps by which it occurred depends very much on the type of halogenoalkane that you have. So in my first example here, let's consider this halogenoalkane. This is an example of a tertiary halogenoalkane. The way I'm able to recognize it is the carbon that is attached to the chlorine is attached to three others. Now, I'm going to draw that picture down here in 3D. Here's that central carbon attached then to a chlorine, and then the three branches are each attached to a methyl. So CH3, CH3, and CH3. The first step in this mechanism involves with the breaking of the bond between the carbon and the chlorine, and I show that with a curly arrow. The curly arrow shows the movement of the electrons that are present in this bond. So they move off and now stay with the chlorine. That then results in this species. It looks something like this. I'll draw it here in the common notation then. So my methyls are here. Now when that chlorine leaves, it takes with it the electrons that are in the bond. So it possesses now a negative charge, leaving behind a positively charged carbon. This is called a carbocation. And it represents the first product that's produced in the steps of the mechanism. This carbocation will then react in my next step. So down here, I have that carbocation again, so I'll redraw it here. Again, the three methyl groups, and trying to show it as I can in 3D. It's a positive charge. This, the hydroxide ion, my nucleophile, possessing a negative charge, and those unbonded electrons those pairs of electrons are attracted to this site. So again, I use a curly arrow to show the movement of those electrons to that site. That then results then in my final product, which we can see here with the carbocation bonded now to the hydroxide molecule. So the final picture then of my molecule would look something like this with my carbon here in the center, bonded to OH, and the three methyl groups. And the other product that remains 
is the chlorine that I produced earlier. So this occurs in a two-step mechanism. The first step of this reaction is the slowest step. When we wait for those electrons to leave this site and create the carbocation, our second step is extremely fast. From our unit on the rates of reaction, we know that the slowest step determines the rate of the reaction. And my slowest step here involves one halogenoalkane. That's why the rate of SN1 mechanisms depends on a constant times the concentration of the halogenoalkane, and only one of them are needed. This notation for the mechanism is used to designate this type of procedure. The one here refers to the number of species in the slowest step, or in the rate determining step. S stands for substitution and N nucleophilic. So tertiary halogenoalkanes tend to go undergo this SN1 substitution. Let's look at now if we have a different type of halogenoalkane involved. In this case, we'll take a look at what happens if we have a primary halogenoalkane. I can tell this one's primary because the carbon to which the chlorine is attached is attached to one other. So here we're looking at what happens with a primary halogenoalkane. Down here I'll provide the 3D picture. Carbon, the chlorine, off to a methyl, and coming out of the page, a hydrogen, and into the page, another hydrogen. So there's the halogenoalkane, and remember that this carbon is slightly positive because the electrons are drawn towards the chlorine, which is slightly negative. My hydroxide ion, possessing a negative charge, and those unbonded electrons, is attracted to that site. So using curly arrows, I'll show how it approaches. Now, it's unable to approach from above because this is a negative and this is negative and it would be repelled. So this actually comes up underneath the molecule to come to that positively, uh, slightly positively charged carbon. So make sure your curly arrow shows this. When this approaches, this starts to bond with the halogenoalkane and this pair of electrons up here starts to release and move away with the chlorine. So there's two curly arrows showing here, one the approaching nucleophile, the hydroxide, and one the electrons leaving. For a brief period in time, you form what's called a transition state. That carbon has its bond with the chlorine and a weakening bond and forming bond with the hydroxide. It still has the firm bonds with methyl and the two hydrogens. Now this species should be shown in square brackets, possessing a negative one charge. When those electrons leave and this bond forms, we then result in this final state over here with a primary alcohol. So we have carbon connected to our hydroxide and our two hydrogens, and down here the methyl group. And now the chlorine, possessing the extra electron from the bond, has the negative charge. Now this mechanism happens in one step, moving through this sequence quickly to the transition state and then into my product. And this is called an SN2 mechanism. Nucleophilic substitution, again, two, because there are two substances involved. This one, the halogenoalkane, and this one, my hydroxide. So the rate determining step has two species in it. And here's a look at what that rate looks like. So I'm going to summarize the two mechanisms in this little table down here below. So first of all, the type of halogenoalkane. Let's begin at this block here. For SN1, we require tertiary halogenoalkanes. And for SN2, we require primary. It turns out that SN2 are relatively slow 
mechanisms, but our SN1 is relatively fast. But it does depend on the strength of the carbon halogen bond. So whenever that carbon is connected to, if it's a weak bond, it'll happen fast. If it's a strong bond, it'll be a little bit slower. But generally speaking, SN1 mechanisms with tertiary are much faster. The mechanism here has two steps. And you form in the middle this carbocation, the carbon with a positive charge. In the case of SN2, they happen in one smooth step, forming that transition state at the midway point. If we look at this in an energy diagram, so on this axis we'll put energy, and I'll start with my reactants here and products here. In a two-step mechanism, I'll have two hills, and the first step is the slowest, the breaking off. So I'm going to show that as a big hill, finishing at my carbocation, and then my catocarbion reacts very quickly into my products. So right here is where I have my carbocation present. This reaction happens in one step. So again, energy on the axis here, progress on the bottom. I start, I finish. There is no temporary intermediate species, but there is the transition state, which is right here when that carbon has five bonds. So that would be when I have my transition state. Lastly, I'll just make a comment about the solvents that are used in these reactions. Both of these like polar solvents. However, to stabilize the carbocation, it prefers polar solvents that can H-bond. So we want polar substances that can H-bond with the carbocation. So that means perhaps things like hydroxide or amines would work well. On the other hand, in this case, we don't want. We want no H-bonding. So we only want the substance to be essentially polar. So something like propanone would work rather well. In our next program, we'll take a look at electrophilic substitution.